Hello and welcome to our new chapter, 9-1 Trigonometry, Right Triangle Trig. Most geometry kind of boils down to these concepts. So buckle up because this is going to be a fun one. The Pythag we're going to start off this chapter with the Pythagorean Theorem. And it's converse. So this video is going to be split into two. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, let's start with the Pythagorean Theorem. So they, we, hopefully we remember this. The Pythagorean Theorem is a very, very, very famous theorem that revolves around right triangles, and that states, so the Pythagorean Theorem states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared for right triangles. I'm going to draw a right triangle here to the off to the right, and typically we draw triangles like this. This would be a right triangle, a, b, and c, where c is the hypotenuse. Now, variation to this equation states this. Leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. And if you remember from our last unit, that's pretty much how we labeled them. We called it hypotenuse. We, that's the first thing you should identify. We could call, we could call B leg 1. You could call A leg 2 or switch, switch them up. It doesn't quite matter. But what's important is that you label the hypotenuse correctly. It's always across the right angle. Now, the Pythagorean theorem is useful for solving four pieces of a right triangle. So first example. Example one. If, for instance, we have a right triangle where both of the legs... So let me try to draw that again. So make sure we have a right angle here. Both of the legs, let's say leg, are, are 6 and 3. We don't know what the hypotenuse is here. So hypotenuse, let's call that x. So first things first, label this, just so we remember. We call this leg 1. We could call this leg 2. And now we could solve. So we have a squared, or, or leg 1 squared, 6 squared, plus 3 squared is equal to, in this case, x squared, because that's our hypotenuse. 6 squared is 36. 9 squared is, or 3 squared is 9, getting ahead of myself, is equal to x squared. 36 plus 9 is 45, is equal to x squared. And now we actually need to square root both sides. Simplify the radical if and when you can. So this breaks down to root 9 and root 5. So we could say square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5 stays itself, so x in this particular case is equal to 3 root 5. We ignore the negative version because we know that lengths cannot be negative. Okay, so let's try another one really, really quickly. Example 2. If, for instance, we are solving for a leg that is missing. So let's try a little differently this time. Our triangle is oriented slightly different. We have a right angle in this top right corner. And we're going to say that the hypotenuse here is 10, and this is a 6, this leg. So, as I already stated, identify the hypotenuse, call this leg 1, and let's call this, instead of x, we'll call this y, this will be our leg 2. So, solving for using the Pythagorean Theorem, we would state that 6 squared, because that's leg 1, plus y squared, because that's leg 2, is equal to... 10 squared because that's the hypotenuse. 6 squared is 36 plus y squared is equal to 100. Subtract 36 from both sides. We get y squared is equal to 64. Square root both sides. We get y is equal to 8. And which leads me to our next kind of mini topic. We have what we call here a Pythagorean triple. Because, if you notice, when I put y is equal to 8, all of these numbers are whole numbers. As opposed to, when we have this example, this first example, and if I plugged in x is equal to, oops, we know that this is equal to 3 root 5. None of the, oh, two, two out of the three are whole numbers here. This last one is a radical, a simplified radical. So when we have this, ah, when we have this, uh, when we have the, the in example two, where all of them turn out to be whole numbers, we call that a, those are very special 
um, triangles. We call those Pythagorean triples. A Pythagorean triple refers to triangles whose sides are all whole numbers. Okay, and some common ones are, so common ones, common Pythagorean triples are three, four, five, Then we also have, technically, we also have 6, 8, 10. And if you notice, 6, 8, 10, which you just talked about, is actually multiples of, of this. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 2 is 10. And you could actually repeat that process over and over. Because, for instance, if you multiply this by 3, 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times, four times 3 is 12. Oops. Let's put a 9 here. 12. And then 5 times 3 is 15. And this is also another Pythagorean triple. They are just multiples of this 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Okay? Or Pythagorean triple. So, yes, you have these versions of it 6, 8, 10, 9, 12, 15. Uh, but as long as you know this original one, you could create multiples of it. Oops. That's supposed to be a highlighter. That's okay. So, other Pythagorean triples include 5, 12, 13. If you don't believe me, do the Pythagorean theorem where 13 is the hypotenuse. Okay? We also have 7, 24, 25. We also have 8, 15, 17. And then we also have 9, 40, 41. Now, it's not necessary that you memorize these, but they are very, very useful to actually know off the top of your head. At least, the very least, these three. Four would be great. These five would be wonderful. And technically, this list goes on forever because there are an infinite amount of Pythagorean triples. Okay? So, that's the first half of this lesson. If you do have any questions, uh, please ask, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!